you know, being saved and the process of being saved are kind of two different things in themselves. You see, I was learning about, like, there, as I learned about different religions, there's a thing about altar calls, you know, where as an evangelical or as a Pentecostal, there's a point in the sermon where you go up to the front. People go up to the front. They raise their hand and accept Christ into their hearts, and bada bing, they're saved. There's nothing that they can do now. They're saved by grace. Once saved, always saved. Doesn't really make sense on my end because people are inherently per imperfect, and though good, and though good, we always make mistakes, whether it be you know intended or not. So I was thinking to myself, hmm, what would be the difference between the event of being saved? and the process of salvation. Well, as a Latter-day Saint myself, I and I don't really mean to brag because, you know, you take it as it is what you may think it is. But for me, there are four simple steps. And it goes for a lot of different religions, really. You have faith in Jesus Christ. You repent for everything that you've done. And it's not just being able to just, you know, say you're sorry. It's the action of casting away your problems, so to speak. Then the third part, baptism. Now, some evangelicals may disagree on on whether baptism is essential, but again, as a Latter-day Saint, in my personal experience, baptism is very much essential. It's the only way to enter the gate of the highest level of the kingdom of God. And it starts from there, you know? Of course, we're not just going to baptize infants. I mean, unless you're Catholic or Orthodox or Lutheran or whatever. But at the same time, you know, the age of eight is a good age of accountability to become accountable. So my recommendation for wanting to have your kids baptized, you know, let them grow up in the gospel and show them the good things about it. Teach them correct principles and then let them decide for themselves. I've had too many stories that I've heard about their baptisms being forced upon them, but I'm like, doesn't make any sense because they had to choose it. Each of them had to choose it. And what I would say about that is, if you want to make sure that they do the right thing, you teach them the correct principle, Show them what is good. And sometimes you also got to show them the consequences of doing something wrong. And then you let them decide for themselves. Give them opportunities to show that they understand. So that's the part of baptism. And right after that, once you have that, you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Because once you are cleansed from everything that is holding you back from being in the presence of God, you're able to have part of God with you. Or rather, for me, it's, I mean, it's a third separate being that can be able to dwell in everyone's hearts. And, but he testifies of God. And he shows you the path. And he's a good guide, too. Shows you right and wrong. And helps you magnify the joy. But also when you make a mistake, he also magnifies 
the sorrow. So he's really great to have around. Especially when you feel like you just need to get back to God. So that's all those four things. And there's a secret fifth. There's a secret fifth step. That we try to teach everybody, but it's, you know, something that you just got to understand and learn. Endure to the end. What does that mean? Well, assume you went through those four steps. Faith, repentance, baptism, and the Holy Ghost. And... Uh oh, you make a mistake. What are you going to do about it? Are you just going to say, well, it's over for me. I'm done. I'm not going to be able to go into heaven now. Wrong answer. The fifth step of enduring to the end is basically rinse and repeat. You repeat those four steps, starting with faith. If you say that you've made a mistake, whether it be with alcohol, pornography, or any kind of sin whatsoever. You start with the faith to know that Christ understands your pain. You repent and make reconciliation. Everything that you have done will be reconciled and must be reconciled. And you have to let Christ cleanse you of everything. Because he can offer healing. And it's a beautiful thing. And then you have baptism. Now, you can't just be... Now, once you're baptized, that's an event. So, what do you do about that? You can't just be baptized again, can you? The answer to that is through communion, the sacrament, the bread and the wine, or the bread and the water, to represent the body and the blood of Christ, to... Fulfill and replenish your soul to renew that covenant of baptism and to be able to let the Holy Ghost come back into you. Therefore, the sacrament or communion be able to is able to fulfill the third and fourth step right there because once you are clean, the Holy Ghost can come back into your heart and then you repeat the process. Of enduring to the end. You keep going. And if you fail, repeat those steps. It's that simple. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's free for everyone. That's a beautiful thing, really, because I like to think that we all have an opportunity to go into he heaven. And everyone has that opportunity to accept it of their own free will and choice. And, you know, it's always up to them, but I definitely would like to see so many people want to take that chance, want to be able to grab onto it and say, here am I, you may me. So with that, my friends, I leave that with you just as a random thought of mine before Shabbat or Sunday or whatever day of the week it may be. And with that being said, my friends, Shalom and peace be unto you.